Let's say you have a bunch of people at a party and you're interested to know how they're different. What are some ways we could divide people into groups? Maybe by shirt color, what snacks they ate, who they talked to, what time they showed up, maybe whether or not they brought a bottle of wine as a gift for the host. You can certainly do that and you might learn some interesting statistics, but you could also group people by other more holistic characteristics like the ultra-considerate guest who brought a bottle of wine as a gift and stayed late to help clean up, or the life of the party who showed up late, talked to a ton of people, and while they also brought a bottle of wine as a gift, they drank the whole thing themselves. Or maybe the stylish social butterfly who made sure to say hi to a lot of different people for a short period of time. And then the shy folks standing in the corner by themselves just watching other people. Those two different ways of categorizing people at a party are really different, right? So we can get a lot of insights from those more holistic character depictions that we wouldn't learn from just counting the number of people each guest talked to on average. This difference is very similar to the core difference between personas and customer segments that we might identify in analytics. Both are useful approaches, but they tell us about different things. Personas are a tool that we use to get inside the mind of users. We do qualitative research with real people to understand what motivates them to use our product or service, how they expect it will work, how they feel about it, what appeals to them, and what their intentions are, and so on. These are all characteristics that we can't directly observe because we can't read minds. So we have to talk to people and ask them about those things. Analytics, on the other hand, that data is really large in scale in the number of people, but it has pretty limited visibility into those attitudinal characteristics. We can really only base segments on things like behaviors, such as which pages they visited, which device they're using, how frequently they return, which country they're visiting from, and things like that. Definitely useful, but it's kind of missing something in the human dimension. There's nothing in there about what motivates the person, what they're expecting. We can't easily segment in analytics by user intention because analytics data can't capture those internal factors going on inside someone's head. So I usually recommend that we think about these as separate tools intended for similar things. Personas are derived from qualitative research like interviews, field studies, diary studies, and the point is to understand who our users are, what are their motivations, expectations, and attitudes, and even some high-level behaviors. Like what key tasks are they trying to accomplish? Or how do they approach and think about complicated workflows? Analytics, on the other hand, is quantitative and comprehensive, but it's much less nuanced about intentions and attitudes. We can compare mobile versus desktop users on the same website, and we can see if certain content gets more traffic or whether or not people scroll down to the bottom of the page or how long sessions tend to last on each of those devices. And that can help us make design choices. We can look at the difference in behaviors between people that have made a purchase or not, or look at what features get used by people who use our product every day versus the people that only come back once a week. These two tools are complementary, but they're not the same. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our UX videos, take a look at these over here and consider subscribing to our channel. On our website, inninggroup.com, you can access our free library of over 2,000 articles. You can also register for one of our UX courses that offer live hands-on UX training.